You're welcome back. We are still at Talking Tech, and um, my guest, the CEO of Iroko TV, Jason Joker, is still with me. I hope uh, you've enjoyed the conversation so far. So we are going to continue uh, the last segment. So Jason, um, you launched kiosks. A lot of people began to see all those pink kiosks all over town, and we are confused at first. What is this? You know, we know Etta had such thing, but for Iroko. Uh, and blazon with raw Iroko TV everywhere. Uh, people were confused. So, when you are trying to explain the rationale behind the introduction of the kiosks, you wrote this. This is Nollywood. There are our folks, the folks who sit in the base of the pyramid, who aren't necessarily tech savvy. But those features need folks to be educated. They need their hands to be held. Hence, the introduction of the kiosks a few months back. This way it was, trying to explain the reason behind the Iroko kiosks. What informed your deep conviction that this would work, and how has it fared? So it's interesting, before the kiosks, we had a group of agents um, who would just go around uh, Lagos and try and convince people um, to, 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 to basically sign up for Iroko TV. Our top two sales girls, basically. Um, they walk. They, they basically walked into a hairdresser, and they stayed in a hairdresser all day, and they basically signed people up. So they were signing up like 15, 20 people every day, and we're trying to understand that. So like, what, what's going on there? And it literally was, women would come for their um, uh, women of all ages would come to do their hair. Mm-hmm. They will spend time there, mm-hmm. and usually sometimes there's movies watching in the background. And maybe you haven't, you, maybe you don't like that movie or whatever. So they literally would sign them up. So I asked them, so how would you sign them up? They literally would like. Um, give them their phone, leave the phone with them, they'll now go and sign them up and do different things and then they'll give their phone. I was like, so someone would give you their phone and you do all the work for them and they're, they're okay with that. It wasn't about money, it was about, do I even have the time? Mm. Like, do I even have the time to do it myself? Mm. Do I even want, you know Nigeria is a society where we don't like to do stuff ourselves, we, there's always someone willing to do it for you. So we felt that um, most people who have Android phones don't really know how to use them properly. Um, so in order to kind of like remove that friction and get people using the app, um, one we need to make the app much more simpler, which we which we did. Um, but then just to kind of like kickstart that 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 process. And once someone shows you how to do something, you can do it, right? Yeah. So um, it wasn't even a question of someone being wealthy or not. It was like someone just might not be tech savvy. And I think if you look at most people who have that money in Nigeria, they're not tech savvy. They're not tech savvy people. Like our, our parents. Are not tech savvy. No. If, if, if your mum wants you to do something, or your dad wants, he'll ask you to do it. John, I come do this thing for me. <laughs> so that was exactly the same sort of spirit as how we how we how we did this. And you know, so did it catch on? Did massive it work massively. So when we started, um, I think Nigeria was about well, Africa was at the time about I would say somewhere between eight ten percent of our uh, subscriber base. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's forty seven percent. So uh, seven, seven, forty from 40%. from from eight to ten percent mm-hmm. to like forty seven percent as of uh, November one it was forty seven forty seven percent forty seven percent Nigeria is now our number one market um, based on subscribers not based mm-hmm. on revenue but based on subscribers yeah. um, we see uh, I would probably say this time next year Nigeria may represent like about eighty percent of our subscribers mm. so it's working incredibly well. Uh, and you think the the, the costs incurred in deploying these facilities you know the, 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 the subscription base is justifying it so not quite yet um, I think per our plan we expect to be uh, I think it's Q1 or Q2 sometime in the first half of next year uh, Nigeria will be a profitable market for us so it will take us like 18 months or so to get profitable on a per market basis um, but that's fine I think um, most people have seen the kiosks around so first and foremost that is a great marketing tool for us Again, a lot of our agents walk up to people in the street and once they say you work on TV, they know. Mm. So if someone's coming into the market today, they need to get that mind share. So when someone says, oh, um, like someone says, oh, um, oh, Netflix is coming to Nigeria. Oh, is it like you work on TV? That's mind share. It's so difficult to, to, to kind of like um, mm. to, to, to do that. So for us, it's really about, you know, Putting the it's like our retail network, right? It's about putting establishing our own presence on the ground. It also strengthens your brand. Hundred percent. You know, like Nigerians are very much like they need to, 
they, they need to feel that if there's a problem, you can just go there and someone will be able to solve that problem. So the kiosk is it's education, it's signing people up, it's onboarding, but it's also customer support. Mm. If someone has a problem, they can go there and, they, and we, we have trained agents who can basically get it fixed for them or customer support guys who can get it fixed for them. And I think finally, probably the biggest, um, the biggest uh, importance for us is once a file um, leaves our kiosk, so all, all of our uh, movies are available in the kiosk, for the most part um, once a file leaves the kiosk to an individual's phone we're basically allowing as many people as possible to get a limit, as many movies po- as possible so they can then go out and share the movies and then they can go out and share the movies so they're essentially kind of like um, primarily about our ability to get our movie files out for as many people as possible mm. so it's kind of like rather than someone having to download huge amounts of files mm. and then share them it's we go to a kiosk get a hundred movies and then you can go and give like once you have the hundred movies you have them forever mm. the only issue is that if you don't have an active email because you read subscription then you can't watch them oh. so it's for us it's like we have to be very comfortable with the fact that our files will be out there forever and we're okay with that That's so cool. I think so far the kiosks have been definitely the most dramatic thing that has helped us build a business here in Nigeria okay yeah. uh, and that takes us to the next segment of this show which is investing uh, yes uh, when 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 some people hear about Jason, yeah. Iroko comes to mind, mm-hmm. Hollywood comes to mind. But for a lot of us in the in the industry, you know, uh, we also what comes to mind is also venture capitalism. Sure. Uh, so, um, how would you describe your journey so far investing in Nigeria's tech ecosystem? I think it's been hard. Um, but again, we started in 2013. Yeah. Now it's really in vogue. Um, but we started really early. And as, as I mentioned before, I'd rather be early than be late. Yes. So we were definitely too early. Um, we backed a lot of companies which failed. Um, we lost a lot of money. Um, but in amongst that, you know, we invested in hotels. In amongst that, we invested in Tulare. And I think sort of testament to the staying power of those businesses of that sort of like era, how many of those, how many of the seed funded companies in that era are still in existence today? You know, hotels are still going strong, yes. Tulet is still going strong, drinks is still going strong. You know, do, so. Do they compensate for the losses? Not yet, but they will. Yeah, they will. Sure. I'm confident they will. So, um, again, this is why, as an operator, I understand that I have to have a very, very long term perspective. As an investor, you equally have to have a long term perspective. So when I talk about the market and my, my view of the market and how difficult it is, I'm saying that with 35, 40 million dollars in venture capital raised, these guys have got like a million here, a million there. It's like, it's tough for them. And I would definitely say they're actually probably as well as if not better operators than me in this particular market. So, you know, um, someone recently asked me that, you know, would I give money and expect not to see it back in 10 years? Absolutely. Uh, because it's not like I'm making huge amounts of money from this market. So. I think the market will be there. I think it will be there in like the next decade or so, the next 10 years. Um, I think anybody who's not thinking along those terms should not even be interested in this market. Um, you know, I think a lot of things have improved over the last few years as there have been more incubators and like Mess launched a few days ago. I was at their launch party. Um, obviously, we have Venture Platform. Um, obviously, Y Combinator takes yeah. it, periodically takes its people. So I think there's much, much more um, kind of capital in the system now, which I think is a great thing. Um, but it doesn't make building a business any less difficult. And I think that's the key drive there. Yeah, so you, you did mention that some of the companies you invested earlier, of course, they failed and sure. they lost a lot of money. So uh, what, are the things you, 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 what are the things you took out from having to shut those businesses? I think some things just don't want to be organized, right? Um, that, that's a challenge. Some things just don't want to be organized. And I think... Um, if I had less capital, I would have been able to organize Nollywood the way I would have been able to organize it. Um, so it's a function of capital, it's a function of your ability to organize something. Um, it's actually it's interesting. So we, we had bus.com.ng. Yeah. Um, and I remember us trying to um, work with the bus operators to try and, uh, um, you know, organize the inventory, give people the option to, um, to, to sort of book tickets. But the challenge is that it's one thing to organise someone's inventory. If they don't want their inventory to be organised, then you have a massive problem. At the same time, you need to be attractive enough to customers so that the customers can now come and use you as an option rather than just going down to the 
um, to the uh, to, to, to the bus stop like we yeah. but like we usually do. So we tried and tried. I think that was actually that was the most money we invested in any of the startups. I think it was about four hundred thousand dollars we put into bus.com.ng. It's interesting. I was having dinner with um, uh, uh, the, the the CEO of uh, God is Good Motors, yeah, um, which have got a great way in terms of trying to sort of digitize their their, their, their venture, right? Uh, young guy, tech savvy, understands he's he's been like we really sort of like uh, kind of great company. Um, and he said at dinner, like quite frankly, that like, you guys came to us for infantry. In infantry, he said no, we'll do it ourselves. And I was like, you know what? And I told him like, you know what? We only had four hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand dollars. That you could say no, and it could have an impact. If we had five million dollars, it would be different. If we had ten million dollars, it would be much more different. If we have twenty million dollars, then we start to have a massive impact on how you guys ultimately kind of like um, how customers access your business, etc. So um, today. Outside of God is good motors, no one's really, nothing's really changed. Um, yeah. Nothing's really changed in that market. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we failed because the market was the way the market was, and we didn't have enough capital to capture that. Is that still a big opportunity? A hundred million, ten percent. It's interesting. Um, we met the we met the executive team during that period. We met the executive team from Red Bus, which obviously is a massive, 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 massive um, bus ticketing service. And essentially, is a pioneer mm -hmm. of the bus ticketing service sort of like um, perspective globally. And, and Red Bus were very much like um, when executives came they asked us so are pe is the culture that people buy tickets and I'm like not really they're like well, what do you mean like you go to the bus park do you have a specific ticket for a specific seat I'm like no no not really they're like really surprised by that so then they kind of felt is this like a bus is this like specific to like a bus park or is it something broader about the culture so then it asked me, uh, is there a cinema culture in um, in Nigeria? And I said, uh, yes, there is. Um, and, and he was very much like, when they buy their ticket, is he got a specific seat for that ticket? I said, no. He says, like, has anyone ever tried to put a specific seat on a ticket? I was just like, no. He said, that's a problem. Because the culture of someone getting a ticket and having a specific seat is not there. Without that, you're never going to basically be able to build like that type of system where you might be able to fill a bus like God is Good Motors done a great job um, in terms of filling their own buses and it doesn't really matter what seat you are mm -hmm. but a system where like essentially um, a train ticket or a plane ticket where this is your seat yes this ticket has your seat on it it's your seat and you know you have to come on time and etc etc so if those um, if those uh, lessons aren't learned then you if, they, if, the, if the culture is in there then you don't have anything um, but again, it's the same thing with like most most inter most internal flights. They don't have specific ticket numbers. It's <laughs> go on the plane and find the seat, right? Um, so I think sometimes things don't want to be organised. I think you know it's only after time and money has been deployed yeah. you actually realise that it's a problem. Um, but you know I'm definitely proud of my successes and I'm very proud of my failures as well because it's helped me understand this market like ten times more. Mm. I'm going to ask you this because, of course, you are the one who, of course, take out money and give to people. And today, there are hundreds of tech startups in Nigeria who are looking for this cash. But they are not getting it. Do they deserve it? It's probably the big question. Do they deserve it? So from what you have seen, because I'm sure there are still startups who come to you asking for this funding. And most of them don't deserve it. I know. So, so what do you think is missing? I think don't focus on getting the cash, focus on building an interesting business. Mm. If you find an interesting business which is being built, then you invest in it, right? Mm. Like, I'm always looking for interesting businesses. If something interests me, I will invest in it. Awesome. Uh, some people say there aren't enough original ideas in the ecosystem. And that's why the funding isn't common. Well, if you build something that no one cares about and it's original, then no one still cares about it. Okay. It's not a question of ideas, it's a question of, like, what are you building which is, like, better than what's out there at the moment? And like, let's be real, like, um, some of the biggest successes of the last... Um, so the biggest successes of the last 10 years in technology, like, globally. How different... Think about it today. How different is what's up from Skype? How different is WhatsApp from Skype? To me, they all have the exact same functionality. One was born out of a desktop, the other one was born out of a mobile device. 
But again, before WhatsApp, there was uh, um, um, uh, BBM. Mm. Before both of them, there was um, AOL Messenger. There was oh, Yahoo Messenger. Cool. Precisely. So, would you say WhatsApp is not original? Well, of course it's not original. But what the way they approach and the way they did it and their execution was just far better than everybody else and they won, right? So I think um, a lack of original ideas is irrelevant. It's a question of like, do you have something that is important to people? A lot of people are willing to kind of like um, transfer some economic, economic value, whether that's time and you build an advertising business whether that's a lead generation, so you go to someone and someone gets paid to do something and then there's like a commission on that. Or is it a simple case of my business where it's, I have all these amazing movies, you give me 2,000 hours a year, you can have access to all of those movies. It's literally as simple as that to me. Mm. So, and then my final question. You are not obliged to answer it. No problem. <laughs> it sounds scary. Are you investing in cryptocurrency? No. <laughs> but let me give you an example. Actually, someone asked me this the other day. So, um... Back in 2012, my engineers in London, um, they used to mine uh, Bitcoin. And I thought it was something was quite interesting. Um, I am so focused like on what I do at Iwako. Even the time to like understand cryptocurrency, understand Bitcoin, etc. Like, I don't have that, that deep of an interest um, for me to understand it. So if you ask me now about like blockchain and cryptocurrency, I literally am like a complete amateur. And I'm okay with that. So I put so much energy into Iwako and sort of the other sort of allied businesses. Um, I have a, a wife and three kids um, who also have to have a lot of my time and I try to be home every day for my so, kids. But uh, um, crypto is the river of the moment now. But, it's, but you know what? I, I, that's fine. But it's like, um, I'm not greedy. Uh, I, think I, I think I have enough money. Um, you know, at Iwako, it's nothing which is even remotely going to have any impact on our building our business here and we're building it. So if it's not if it's not something which I like I immediately need, I, I don't I don't bother with it. But but for example, like um, the engineers in in New York, um, you know, last year voice or even yeah you know, this year last year voice was the big sort of thing. So like Alexa and the voice commands, I think that's absolutely amazing. So Siri, Alexa, mm-hmm. um, Google Voice, um, Echo, Echo, that was a big thing. That's actually probably more relevant to us than. Their cryptocurrency. <laughs> so you know it's. Uh, so, but do you, do you have any fear for for those investing? I, do you know what? Genuinely, I don't understand it enough to even have an opinion. <laughs> and again, I'm okay with that. <laughs> and that's about the size of our package today on Talking Tech. It was nice chatting with the CEO of Iroko. Yes, do join us next time on another edition, another interesting package that will come your way. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Bounce News Nigeria or Twitter at Bounce News NG. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel where you get to watch these kind of interesting shows. Thank you for watching.